Hello guys welcome back to our channel. This is the story about what if Naruto was Sage of the Wild huge shout out to Bait Mayhem for this story, if you want more of this, make sure you're subscribed and hit like. And comment down below when you want the next part. Let's begin. Green. Naruto loved the color green, the color of nature. It was often proven that his favorite color was orange, and most agreed with that, but Naruto secretly loved the soft color. It reminded him of the training he received on Mount Mayaboku and all his friends within the summons realm. It was one of his favorite memories actually, his banter and meals with the elder toads, Ma and Pa. Their choice of food wasn't to his particular liking, but just sitting at the table with them, talking like a family. It really made him feel like he was home. Naruto sighed to himself, no point in reminiscing about old time ya. He couldn't really help it though, it was raining, and the rain always brought back memories, he didn't really know why, but it was almost like an old lullaby. Naruto stretched, rising up from his meditative position in the middle of a large forest. It had been four days since his life had been royally messed up. A new world, time, dimension, everything. Well almost. Naruto started walking, letting the rain fall on the small dry patch of grass he had been sitting on for the last few hours. He had on his customary orange and black jumpsuit with his sleeves rolled up. His right arm covered entirely of bandages. He had tried to contact Karama or the souls of the other Biju that resided within him, but when he arrived within his seal, they were all sleeping and showed no intention of getting up. How troublesome. Naruto snorted at the familiar phrase and kept walking under the trees, the storm maintaining its storminess with dull rumbles and huffs of cold wind, pondering rain or wind. His mind was lost in thought as he kept walking. He had been trying to figure some stuff out since he arrived in this place, but, well, he wasn't exactly the brightest tool in the shed. He had arrived here at the behest of a dying god. He didn't really remember the dude's name, much less believing he was a god, but listened to his tale. Apparently, he was the god of the wild, primal fear, and nature's more peaceful aspects. He had goat legs too, talk about trippy, Naruto thought he was an experiment of Orochimaru's for a few minutes after that. The fading god told him he was dying due to the lack of nature in this world, of how humanity no longer needed it, and as such destroyed it to accommodate for their growth. His domain was shrinking by the day, and the last few sanctuaries were soon to be under threat. As a dying wish, he bequeathed the remaining power to me, the last true sage, someone with a true connection to the fading power. He told him of the soon coming peril this world was facing, of how a sequence of long feared prophecies were coming to pass, and the fate of this world was in the balance. Someone with his power was needed, someone who could support and fight for this world was required, and since he had just finished his duties as the child of prophecy, he was the perfect candidate. So, without waiting any further delay, the god bequeathed his domain to Naruto, and then faded away. Leaving him there. In the middle of a cave. In a different dimension. With no clue as to how, where, or what he was supposed to do. You can probably imagine how that went. Using his anger and desperation, he blasted his way back up to the surface of the new world his was in, and he wasn't really sure how to handle any of what he was seeing. Large metal towers, everywhere. He was standing in a forest area, but all around him, large metal constructs and hundreds of thousands of people bustled about in a dull roar of activity. And then he switched to recon mode. And since that time, which was four days till his present time, he discovered several things. He could still use his chakra, his summons however, didn't work. He could still use Zenjutsu, and his Biju tenants were still there, though significantly weakened and sleeping. This world was known as America, and it was one of seven continents on this whole planet called Earth. They spoke an entirely different language, used a different currency, and one other thing. Nobody had chakra. Nothing did. It was a horrifying discovery. But on a positive note, there were a few good things that came out of it. Apparently, his title as the true sage came with some merit. Spirits of nature came all out of the woodwork to meet him, and after he finished telling them all not to reveal his presence or whereabouts to anyone, they began to teach him. All six thousand of him. To save time. Which leads us to the present. Naruto was now fully fluent in most languages on this planet, a developed understanding of how this works and what rules it. The Olympians. It was a bit of a pill to swallow when he was first briefed by the spirits, but his existence in their world was all the proof he needed. Gods and monsters roamed this world, all of them with incredible powers, and all of it completely under the common human's nose. Fantastic. So here he was, still sitting in the small park that he first came here in, giving his chakra to the nine sleeping Biju residing within him. They were regaining power, at a decent pace too, but the Bijuu had a lot of power to replenish. Even with his chakra helping them, they still had a way to go. He needed to move. Naruto groaned, walking to the edge of the forest area, staring at all the people just going about their lives, whether it happened to be a boring job or a fun shopping day. 
maybe it was a rush to a late appointment, or possible a slow walk with a bounce in their step, after having a satisfying date with a beautiful partner, or maybe they were just happy to be alive. Naruto sighed as he watched them, his mind weighed heavily by his plight. How do I get back? He muttered to himself absently, and only having one conclusion. He would have to meet the Olympians. But would they really let him leave? One of their gods, a lost one, and a fairly powerful one at that, had given him his powers and domains, would they really let him leave with the power from this world? He couldn't give it back, the guy who gave it to him was gone, what was he going to do? Naruto slid down the tree trunk he was leaning on, letting his feet splay out in front of him. What to do, what to do? You need to move forward a voice said from behind him. Naruto didn't even flinch as he looked over and saw a small girl, in maybe her late preteens, with a small picnic basket and flannel dress staring at him. She seemed innocent enough, but her aura and eyes were telling him she was not as she seemed. Though where? Naruto asked faintly, and surge of depression taking over as he just spilled. My home is gone, my friends are gone, my family is long dead, and I've been given a task I don't even know anything about. Where should I go? Feel free to let me know Naruto said sardonically, he typically didn't get depressed, but what was he supposed to do? What? I don't know, but sitting here dormant won't help you. You can only truly know where you are going when you start walking. Step forward, Naruto Uzumaki, and keep going. She said strongly, and when Naruto turned to face her, she was gone, presence and all. Naruto sat under the raining sky for a few more moments before standing up, brushing a few grasses blades from his pants before dispelling all his current clones. Take a step huh? Without any clue as to where. Or why. Naruto asked a bit hesitantly before feeling his trademark grin settle over his features. What did he have to lose? Why not? He declared, he pumped his fist in the air as he shook himself of his funk. Maybe he could be a wanderer like the pervy sage. Except not an erotic novelist, he wouldn't go that far. He could go anywhere, so might as well start walking. He had a mission and he hadn't failed yet. So with his old spirit back and a few strange looks from his fellow pedestrians, he started walking. Naruto was searching. Recently, a strong natural presence appeared on his radar, it was like a lighthouse on the edge or a peninsula out at sea. He had been heading towards it for the last, hmm, he didn't remember, it's been more than a week, but less than a month, maybe. Naruto had been wandering since that fateful day, and he had finally reached his destination or the origin of the beacon that kept pinging off his brain like a lighthouse. He walked up this hill, heading for it, and just as he was about to walk over the crest, he slammed into something. Naruto stumbled back in shock before reaching forward tentatively and poking it. To his surprise, it touched something. Like an eggshell. He ran his hands over the surface, intrigued by what he was feeling. He was fairly certain the origin of the power was just over the hill, so what was this? Was it a barrier to protect it? Naruto drew on his senjutsu, letting nature's power strengthen him as he focused. One thing he noticed about his travels was the power of nature in this world was in significantly less quantity, but it was also much more potent. He wasn't sure why, but maybe it had something to do with the blessing he received from Pan, the god who gave him his titles. He really wasn't sure how to feel about that guy, dumping this on him with no preparation or decent explanations, actually, he was, screw that goat-legged prick. Naruto reached forward again, groping around for the barrier, and when he felt contact, he felt it give when he touched it, and as he walked though, it fell off him like water and reformed behind him, interesting. He deactivated his sage mode and turned back around and blinked in surprise. He was staring eye to eye with a small dragon and nearly 20 kids his age, pointing sharp weapons at him. Who are you? One shouted out, while the dragon lumbered a little bit closer, smelling him. Don't move. Or Peleus will eat you. Another shouted out, the confidence in his voice made Naruto freeze as the dragon came closer. Peleus leaned forward, sniffing him, before beginning to circle him, sniffing him all over, and then in a small moment of silence, the dragon nuzzled his arm with a small playful growl. He encircled him in his long body and brought Naruto closer as he coiled up. Naruto wasn't sure what to do in that situation, and so he reached up and petted Peleus carefully, making sure to be aware of what the dragon was doing. He liked having both hands. The kids were in shock at Peleus's behavior, and some of them even lowered their weapons and walked forward. The most notable was a tall centaur and a man with goat legs. Naruto was instantly on guard as the two approached, and Peleus seemed to sense his distress. 
Peleus leaned over his shoulder and barred his fangs at the two approaching, and they looked extremely surprised at the dragon's behavior, especially the centaur. He looked down right mind. He Peleus. What's wrong? Who are you? What is this place? Naruto asked with a small amount of nervousness. The dragon encircling him was a small confidence booster, but if could just as easily crush him as protect him. The centaur stepped forward, but the dragon made sure to keep him at a distance. My name is Chiron. We are a camp half-blood, a safe haven for demigods. Who are you? You bear no divine blood, how did you manage to get through the barrier? He asked calmly, though Naruto could see he was nervous. Naruto pondered this for some time, before looking at Chiron, I am Naruto Uzumaki, a sage. I came here to investigate the source of a particularly strong source of natural energy. Do you know where I might find it? Jiren and the rest of the campers tensed, and Peleus looked at Naruto curiously, before taking a small talon and pointing up to a tree on the crest of the hill. Naruto followed his gesture and saw the source. The Golden Fleece. Naruto thanked the dragon and tried to climb out of his embrace. Yeah, no. He tried to open the dragon's coils, and that didn't work. He tried climbing over, but his tail would come around and shove him back in. Naruto tried jumping, and his tail just caught around one of his legs, before letting this growingly disgruntled shinobi fall to the ground on his face, and then dragging him back. The campers weren't really sure if they should be laughing or not, as the dragon had never reacted to any of them like that. Naruto huffed in the center, before looking up and poking the dragon. Mind letting me go? Naruto asked, while the dragon simply looked down at him. Then slowly, Peleus threaded his head in between Naruto's legs and started walking off with him. Naruto swayed and grabbed onto the dragon's neck for balance, while the campers gave whimpers of dismay at seeing the stranger getting a ride from the camp's protector. Naruto steadied himself as he watched Peleus give him a lift to the tree in question, and when they arrived, he raised his head and lifted him up so he could reach it. Naruto patted the dragon's head in thanks, before focusing on the fleece. He reached for it and right when the campers started to yell at him to stop, there was a large gust of wind. And then a pulse. Naruto felt his sage mode activate without his consent, and then the fleece started to glow brightly as nature answered its call. The grass waved about his flowers, and the surrounding greenery shone with luster and health. Naruto's eyes widened, a sudden light consuming his form like a biju cloak, blooming like a star. The campers looked away in shock and awe at the amount of nature energy being released. Peleus watched on though, his eyes held only joy. When the light faded, everyone looked back and was shocked at what they saw. The symbol. Naruto was standing on Peleus's head, a long white cloak draped over his shoulders with Tomo symbols along his collarbone that wrapped around his width. The center was open, showing his developed physique and ritualistic tattoo on his stomach. Above his head, the campers gasped at the symbol. Pipes. Hands pipes. Immediately, all the satyrs, dryads, and all nature spirits, Chiron included, bowed their heads, some with tears in their eyes. All hail Naruto Uzumaki, champion of Pan, the god of the wild, nature, and music. Chiron announced with a small amount of joy and happiness in his tone. All the campers bowed their heads in recognition, and Naruto was simply staring down at them, before looking over so he could see Peleus's eyes. What are they doing? The dragon snorted. Naruto wasn't really sure what was happening, but one thing was for sure. This place was weird. Naruto had eventually left Peleus to continue guarding the tree, much to his complaint, and left with the campers who apparently wanted to celebrate whatever had just happened. Naruto received a tour of the camp by several satyrs who were eager to be around him. He figured it was because he was Pan's champion, which he figured was his will incarnate or something, which again didn't make sense, since the god pulled the vanishing act on him after giving him this domain. He wasn't a god, he checked. He didn't have itcher flowing through his veins, a relief discover. The tour was informative, and it became apparent that he had several followers here, all of them nature spirits. At the start, he had four guides, and now, he had nearly thirty. It was partially annoying hearing them all have their unique descriptions of the camp, and he resisted the urge to ditch them all, so he could explore himself. The camp had several features, some of which caught his attention. The cabins for the gods' children in particular, they were arranged in a U-shape, and each had a symbol over their door, some that Naruto recognized. A lightning bolt, Zeus. A trident, Poseidon. A dove, Aphrodite. A sun, Apollo, a wheat symbol, Demeter. In all of Naruto's travels and research, he came to one uncontestable conclusion. He didn't like Ares. He had seen war, he had fought in it. It's taken friends, families, homes, and hope from all its participants. It shed countless lives and spilled oceans of blood, all for some squabble between their two leaders. After the longest tour he had ever been on, he headed for the camp store and tried to buy a shirt. Surprise. The camp shop didn't take mortal money. Its currency was of drachmas or ancient Greek coins. 
Naruto sighed and tried to make a few deals with the cashier, haggling, and eventually, he walked out empty-handed, a little annoyed. Did that guy really think he could get one over on him? He may be born into this world a few weeks about, but he wasn't an idiot. Not completely anyway. After that, Naruto headed back up the hill, towards Peleus, who was resting his head on his front legs. He heard Naruto coming and rocked his head from side to side in happiness. Naruto smiled at this and quickened his pace to greet the dragon. He wasn't really sure why the dragon liked him so much, but it was a nice change of pace. Naruto hugged the dragon's head, which was the size of his torso, and scratched the edge of his jaw, watching the dragon's eyes roll back and close in contentment. Naruto chuckled at the dragon and debated on climbing the tree to take a nap when a familiar voice called out to him. Kit. Naruto froze before a grin sprouted on his face of epic proportions. Karama. Is that you? One sec. I'll be right there. Naruto released Peleus and sat down on the ground beside him. Before closing his eyes and diving inward. He felt Peleus draw him into his embrace and smiled at the dragon's protectiveness. Naruto fully dived in and when he heard the familiar voices, he smiled widely and ran down the halls. Naruto burst into the room and shouted out happily, Kurama. Hey. Kur, dot dot Kurama. Naruto walked forward, noticing that his mindscape, it was empty. What? Kurama. Nothing. Matatabi. Isobu. Shukaku. Son Goku. Seiken. Chmei. Kakam. Jiki. Anyone? Nothing. Naruto frowned as he started to wander, this wasn't right. They were here. Where did they go? Naruto started to panic, oh, where did you guys go? Naruto muttered, before walking aimlessly, shouting random names to reach out to them. Nothing. Naruto was now genuinely panicking. He was running through the halls of his mind. Kurama. Where are you? Kit. Naruto froze, before tilting his head. Kurama. He shouted out. Dot Kit. Naruto whirled around and started running at the voice, Kurama. I am coming. He shouted off as he ran. Where was he? Was he okay? Did something happen? Naruto ran a few more corners before hearing something. The battle. Naruto blurred around a few more corners and ran into the room. And felt relief surge through him. All nine Biju were in the room, a few tousling with each other over an apparent disagreement. They were significantly smaller than their usual size, but that wasn't important. Kurama was standing over at another of the entrances, shouting every now and then. Hit. He would bellow, before falling silent for a time, waiting for a response. Naruto ran at him, Kurama. All the Biju whirled around and saw Naruto running at them, a look of glee on his face. Isobu. Matatabi. Shukaku. Kakam. Chmei. Jiki. Son Goku. Seiken. Hey guys. Naruto called out happily as he ran at them. The Biju all watched him come closer, some with amused looks, and others merely snorted at his entrance. There you are Kit, we have been trying to reach you for the last few hours, what happened? This isn't the room we're originally sealed in. Naruto ran up to them and paused, his smile slowly dropping. Yeah, I went be where you guys normally would be, but you weren't there. Did you guys wander? I mean it must have gotten pretty boring being in the same place. The Biju shifted, well, yes, but this is your chakra network. If all of us were to stay in a tunnel, we would destroy your chakra passages. Naruto blinked, before looking at them owlishly, do you think that maybe you just moved to a larger Tinkestu point? I mean, there are a lot more entrances here, and it's bigger. The Biju blinked at him with a similar expression, well I'll be damned, the Gaki has a brain. Son Goku muttered in partial awe, while Isobu and Kakam snorted. Naruto grew a tick mark and waved a closed fist at him, oh I. If you wanted a tousle you should have just asked. Son Goku grinned and entered a defensive stance, lowering his center of balance, like you could best me. Naruto, channel my chakra. Kurama said suddenly, looking at Naruto with an expectant gaze. Naruto looked slightly confused, but decided what the hell. What was the worst that could happen? Naruto closed his eyes and focused, before a large orange glow started emanating from his chest, directly below his collarbone. The other Biju looked at the glowing spot on his chest, and Jiki snorted. It's like those you are here markers on those tourist maps. The other Biju wondered what would happen if they flared their chakra but refrained. They were still in a Tenketsu point, and since the seal wasn't able to regulate all of them. It may have been created by death, but regulating nine Biju was a bit of a stretch, dot actually. Garama pointed over to the rest of them, why are you here? Naruto nearly fell over at the blunt question, while the other Biju frowned. I wasn't aware that we weren't welcome, dot Isobu said dryly. Garama shook his head, no, I'm asking why you are fully here. I recall you leaving a small amount of your power and souls here to communicate, so why are you fully here? The Biju opened their mouths to reply, but closed them silently and thought, it was true. They were here, not somewhere else. 
They were fully present. What happened? It is strange, I will give you that, but I was unaware of this. Do any of you know? Jiki said evenly, though you could tell he was intrigued by what happened. The Bijuu went about examining themselves, checking their pools and identifying themselves as their primary selves, whatever that meant. Matatabi didn't bother doing anything, as she simply sat on her haunches and watched everyone else. Kurama didn't bother either, instead, he was poking his tails into different passageways to see what happened when Naruto channeled his chakra. That was a discovering in itself. According to whatever passages Kurama was inside and channeled his chakra, he could see it mark on his skin. That was rather amusing at first, as Kurama and Matatabi tried to guess which way was which before Naruto channeled his chakra, which got old real quick. I am not a map. Naruto roared in comical indignation. Kurama only laughed while Matatabi flicked him with a paw. Good thing too. Your sense of direction is less than inspiring. Matatabi laughed as Naruto staggered a few steps. Naruto looked indignant but didn't reply, he simply smirked and then laughed. He just kept laughing and couldn't stop. Eventually, he managed to calm down and stare at all of them. I'm glad you're all okay he said with a massive grin. The Bijuu all chuckled at his grin and lumbered over, crowding around him and leaning down to his eye level. Yeah, we are okay kid. Son Goku said. They all had a brief moment of laughter before focusing on their host. So Gaki, where are we? I no longer sense the abundance of chakra in the outside world, and from what we have seen from your eyes, it is not the elemental nations. What occurred while we slept? Naruto frowned and then began to retell the tale. Of how he had just finished coming home from the Third Shinobi War, how Sasuke had said goodbye, and how he had just had his replacement arm attached before being whisked away. He described it like the Hiroshin, but it was green instead of yellow. When he regained his senses, he was in the audience of Pan, a Greek god of nature, and the wild. Apparently he was dying from his lack of domain in this world, so he bequeathed his power to him and sent him on his quest to aid the child of prophecy in this world. The Bijuu listened to him, eyebrows lifted at the idea of gods and goddesses in this world that actively meddled in mortal affairs. That's disturbing. Isobu said after a long pause before looking to Shukaku. Sand armor will be needed immediately. If this world has gods meddling and fooling around to save time, we need maximum defense at all times. Shukaku nodded in response, though his maniac grin was in place at the idea of fighting immortals. But first, Kurama said, catching all the Bijuu's attention. We need to allocate ourselves either back to the room we were once in, or split up to our own Tenketsu points. We can't all remain here. The flow of chakra would destroy his chakra coils and most likely kill us all in the process. But Foxy. We can't die remember. Shukaku said with some giggles, and Matatabi frowned as he pieced together Kurama's thoughts. In the elemental nations, yes, we couldn't. We could be defeated, but we would reform. We aren't in the elemental nations anymore. The nearly complete lack of chakra in this world is unsettling, the fact is if we even could reform, the likelihood we would be whole again, or even come back a close to full power, or even half, is minimal. That was a bomb. Naruto paled. So, if I die, all of you will too. They all looked down at him and frowned at his face, probably, yes. Our life now is your hands Naruto, we trust you. And if you do something stupid, we will be there to pull you out. Consider this a promise of trust and mutual need of survival. Seiken said. And all the Bijuu nodded and then smiled. We are glad it's you though kid, anyone else would have been, hard. Imagine if it was B. All the Bijuu shuddered while Jiki looked annoyed. Naruto took a few breaths to calm himself and then smiled at all of them. I won't die. Not so long as I have you guys to look out for. I promise. Matatabi purred and rubbed her cheek against him, while Kurama only grinned, and the rest of the Bijuu nodded in consent, small smiles in place. Naruto smiled at all of them, we got this. I'm Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Nobody is gonna take us down. He roared with a fist pump, confidence radiating from him. Geez kid we got it, now calm down will ya? It echoes in here. Sorry. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto opened his eyes and smiled as he looked down at his chest. Nine small flows were moving across his chest. They had agreed to meet him in the original room every night, and until then they would remain in separate points. It would help take the strain off from having nine chakra monsters within your chakra system. Each had moved to one of the eight inner gates. Chukaku sat at the first gate, Matatabi sat at the second gate, the gate of healing. Asobu sat at the third, the gate of life. Son Goku sat at the fourth, the gate of pain. 
Akam sat at the fifth gate, the gate of limit. Kakam had a unique job at that gate. She was the most level-headed out of everyone there, and such had the job. She was in charge of how much Chakra Naruto could expel at one point, regulating it and preventing massive damage, should a burst come though. She also helped him in control, and such since having his already astronomical reserves were added to the power of all nine Biju. Seiken sat at the sixth gate, the gate of Yu. Demei sat at the seventh gate, the gate of wonder. She had a special job as well. Should Naruto have any issues with Chakra, or he and Kukuo couldn't keep up, she could pick up the slack. At this gate, Chakra that surrounded him became so potent it ate his skin away faster than Yakai, so her insect armor and her ability to release massive amounts at once was perfect for an emergency release. They couldn't do this with others around, but it would be a pretty massive bang. Jayuki sat at the eighth gate, and the most important. The gate of death. Because he had the most experience with merging and working with humans, should Naruto ever be pushed to this point, he could take over and successfully regulate the chakra, while all the others focused solely on healing him. And lastly, Kurama, he sat in Naruto's actual chakra pool, the first he would draw on, and the person he would remain in the most contact with. He and Kurama had been partners for the longest, and while others would have their turn since Kurama was qualified to fit in any slot, he was needed at the head of the ship right now. All the Biju would be able to interact and give him chakra without opening the gates, it was just that those gates were the largest places for them to stay, and the most able to handle the strain. Should he ever have to release the eight inner gates in combat, it would also give them a direct route out of his body, should the foe be too great for them to defeat. Naruto insisted on this, because if there was an enemy that all of them couldn't beat, he would face them alone to buy them time for them to escape. All of them agreed in the moment, though all of them made sure to cross their tails. It was rather funny actually because Shukaku couldn't cross his tail since he had one, but he took advantage of his human hands and crossed his fingers behind his back. With this system in place, they all had a direct route to his mindscape as well as his senses. They were part of the world, an extra eight and a half brains ready to back him up. If you can't guess who would be the half-brained one, you should feel bad. Naruto sighed to himself happily as he looked around, taking comfort in the embrace of Peleus, the friendly dragon. Naruto was already growing attached to the little dragon as he leaned back on his cool scales. He wished he could have had a companion like him. Just a massive badass looking out for him. Well don't I feel special Kurama mumbled playfully, and Naruto snorted, yeah, remember back then. When I was thrown off that damned cliff to meet you. Hell of a ride huh? Kurama snorted, yes, you were so insufferable back then, a little snot-nosed brat. Naruto grinned, looking up at the tree that held the golden fleece. He felt so much better around it, like two magnets finally coming together. It was honestly like sitting in front of a warm fireplace with friends all around. He took a few deep breaths, noticing the sky around him was darkening. He knew it was late, but he didn't think he was in the mindscape that long. Must have been the tour, not surprised. He leaned over to Peleus's head and scratched it, earning a hum of approval and a few twitches of his back legs, as he let himself feel relaxed. Naruto chuckled and closed his eyes, a small canine poking out of his lip. Who needs a cabin? I got a dragon as a pillow, come fight me. All the Bijuu snorted in unison, but couldn't help but agree. The next morning, a bell rang him from his dreams. Naruto twitched awake and sat up groggily, looking up. The sun was starting to rise, and early risers were getting up and moving about. Naruto sat in the coils of his new best friend and watched them all with interest. Chukaku, where is Naruto's sand armor? Isobu cut into his mindscape. Chukaku just giggled, sighed. I need sand you can't shell. I don't see sand anywhere do you? The rest of the Biju sighed, alerting the rest to all of them being awake. They all came forward and nodded to Naruto, well, except for Shukaku and Asobu, they were having a weird staring contest. Naruto could probably guess where this was going and decided to just get on with it before being asked, lest it start another argument. He stood up shakily and stretched, Pelia stretching as well behind him and perfectly mimicked movements. Naruto caught this and laughed, before rubbing Pelias on the head. I'll be back later, keep guarding that okay? It's precious. Naruto said with a grin, before turning and hopping over the dragon's coils in an impressive display of ability. Peleus hummed in recognition and shifted, before relaxing and starting to snooze off. Naruto suppressed a chuckle and headed into camp. He had small tests to run today, and he wasn't simply going to ignore it. Naruto walked over the campus, waving at everyone who waved to him. He had an early morning entourage of satyrs and cautious dryads. The satyrs had no issue being close, but whenever he smiled and waved at a dryad, they immediately ran for cover behind tree. Naruto frowned at this and asked. Is that normal? One of the satyrs looked abashed and looked down in embarrassment. Well, no. Naruto frowned further before turning to the trees and walking towards a small crowd of dryads. 
They seemed to tense at his approach, before he raised his hands in the universal sign of surrender, and approached slowly, making no sudden moves. He walked to the edge of the forest, not getting to close, and looked at the small group. Why do you run? Have I done something to offend you? He asked with concern. He had people flee him before, but that was one of two reasons, and since the Bijuu were now stored in their own Taketsu points, they shouldn't be able to be sensed. The Dryad stepped forward cautiously, staring at him warily. You were chosen by Pan, correct? Naruto nodded, yes, is there a problem? The Dryads looked at him in surprise, before looking down with massive blushes. W well, he was, uh, he, dot um. Naruto recognized this, look. He just knew, deep down, the familiar problem he had felt when around his strongest teacher, and felt his heart sink. He was a pervert wasn't he? The dryads all looked at him gratefully for saying it instead of them. He had a habit of, moving around. Whether we consented or not. Naruto froze at that, before a scary look came on his face, are you saying, he was a, he forced himself on you? He growled out intermittently, trying to negate his anger. The dryads looked surprised at his reaction, and a little fearful. We usually got away, but not always. Naruto's frown deepened into a feral snarl, a fang poking out from his lips. His eyes flickered red for a small second, before he sighed. All the anger seemed to vanish from him, and he looked at them all sadly. He bowed to them. I am sorry. I was unaware of what my presence meant. I leave you alone, and for what it's worth, I'm sorry about what he did. He said with a sad smile, before backing away and turning back to the satyrs, who looked ashamed. You have a large area that is used for training or other destructive things. The satyrs looked surprised at his request, but nodded, we have a few training grounds, but if you really want to mess some stuff up, I would recommend going to the plains on the other side of the big house. Not a lot happens back there, and is often used as a mock battle zone. It's barely used anymore, but it's large, and relatively clear. Be careful for other campers though, some might be over there. Naruto nodded, before turning and walking at a fast pace, leaving the small group of nature spirits behind. They all went about their business, though a few dryads looked curious as to Naruto's reaction. It wasn't perverted or even suggestive, he was angry. Angry at the idea someone would do that, genuinely bothered by it even. Who was he really? Once Naruto rounded a corner, and then his anger quickly reappeared. He slammed the ground with a closed fist. He didn't channel any chakra as he didn't want to make a crater, but it didn't help much. When his fist connected, a rumble was heard, and a small explosion puffed up where he hit. Naruto was actually startled by this, and so were the Biju. That was without chakra or any enhancements. Your body shouldn't be that strong. Not even B could do that without my chakra. Jiki cut in. Naruto frowned and looked at his head, looking for cuts or bruising, or even inflammation. Nothing. Naruto wasn't sure what to think. What the hell did that pervert do to me? Why is it always a pervert kami dammit? The Biju were genuinely confused as well. I'll run a full chakra cycle when you sleep tonight. Jiki, can you check his tissue and blood? Karama asked. Jiki nodded, yeah, I'll do that later too. Naruto, before you go to bed, get some of your blood and dab it over your 8th gate. I look it over. Naruto nodded in thanks, before quickly darting out of there to avoid being found. No doubt people heard the boom, and we coming to investigate. Little did he know, a dryad was watching with wide eyes. Naruto walked into the center of the field and then closed his eyes in focus, okay, we know I have my chakra, and I know I can use Senjutsu and the Kage Bunshin. What should we start with? Shunshin, Rasengan, and Hiroshin in terms of Jutsu, but we should start with chakra control exercises. Kakam answered. I would recommend starting with tree climbing, we don't know how bad it is after all. Attempting any Jutsu could be hazardous. Naruto nodded in affirmation, before closing his eyes and sitting down in a meditative position. He knew he could use chakra, but that fact that he only used the Kage Bunshin once before in this world, and that was when he was still supplementing chakra to the Biju. Now that they were back to health, that would be dangerous. Naruto focused within himself looking for chakra. He knew where Kurama's and all the others were, but he needed his, where where where, under Kurama. He reached for it and gave it a tug, letting some of his flow to him. This was a common exercise for academy students to awake then passages and chakra. His passages were already open, but he was trying to push it to the surface, but for some reason, it was easier. Naruto's chakra flickered around him, before shrouding him in a blue-green aura. That was strange. Leftover Senjutsu? You would be a toad statue if that was the case, speaking of Senjutsu, how can you access it? I thought you needed a contract with one of the sage summoning contracts in order to attain it, and if summonings in this world don't work, then how? Naruto blinked in realization, before frowning, that was a good point, how could he? Was his name still on the contract? Naruto turned off his chakra and activated his senjutsu, which was remarkably looked around, trying to notice anything different. 
If this was the same Senjutsu, then he should have a time limit right. He just had to wait. And wait he did. Hit, it's not turning off. If anything, the nature energy bonded with you. That isn't possible is it? If it did I'd be stone. Anne was a god of nature, and more specifically, the wild. It's entirely possible that you have his Senjutsu. Naruto paled, I don't look like a goat do I? Hiroma looked affronted, and then nervous, check, immediately. Naruto didn't need to be asked twice. He ran around the big house, before running straight for the small lakes that were all over the campus, even a stream would work, he just needed something. Please. Don't be a goat. Naruto was running his hands all over his body as he ran, trying to find anything abnormal as he ran, or just checking to make sure some of his characteristics were still there. He blurred through a small group of campers, who gave out cries of anger and dismay as he shoved through them, he wasn't sure if they gave chase or not, but he was too busy panicking to worry about such a thing. He ran to the local lake and ran onto its surface to the center, where there were no ripples, and knelt down to stare at himself. He ignored the surprised gasps of the nature spirits at his ability and stared down at himself, curiosity intriguing him, and also relief, a lot of relief. Okay, so not a goat, but what the hell happened to my face? He and the Bijuu stared down at his reflection and saw that he was mostly unchanged. Except for his eyes and familiar tattoo. Instead of the orange pigment that showed on his skin around his eyes, it became this weird stylized green tattoo that branched out like horns and reached down to his cheekbones in a strange spike-like fashion. On his forehead, a small green diamond appeared, and he gasped. It's like botch ants. Do you think the secret to her metodic regeneration was Senjutsu? Hit, your eyes. Naruto drew his focus from his new tattoos and focused on his eyes and felt the air in his lungs leave quietly as he got lost in them. They were like inverted solar eclipses. His pupil was still black, gut his iris was like molten silver, shimmering like water under sunrise. The outside rim of his eyes were a faint green that pulsed faintly, never stopping, it was like his eyes were a perfect system of equilibrium in liquid states. It was mesmerizing. Naruto reached down and touched his reflection, specifically the part under his eye, and breathed out in awe. Hey guys, I know that my eyes change when I use your chakra, but what is this? It's not the senjutsu I remember, it feels different, much more serene, and calm. Before it was just peaceful, but this is like a small spring stream, it's peaceful now, but I get the feeling it can rumble like a waterfall. The Bijuu couldn't help but agree and examined his chakra from within his system. This chakra, or I guess I should say energy, has almost unified with your chakra, it's amazing, I'm not even sure if this is chakra anymore. Kukuo said in awe, this wasn't like her. She was like an angry librarian when he did something wrong, but now, she was like a little kid seeing the stars for the first time. It's like you're directly drawing from nature itself, not a conduit from Mount Mayaboku, you're feeling the peace of the world right now, you should be honored, I don't think you're the first, but I know that fewer than 10 people have felt this before, Asobu said with partial reverence, he must have enjoyed the feeling. Chukaku was giggling without a care in the world, before rolling over and going to sleep, and then snapping awake. Hey. Remember, I need sand for the armor. He went ignored, not that he noticed as he went back to sleep a few nanoseconds later. Naruto slowly looked up and around, before noticing something that made him freeze. Nearly all the campers at the camp were staring at him from the shore, their jaws practically sinking in the mud. Naruto thanked that he was too far away from them to see his eyes, and just stood up and nodded to them like he knew what he was doing the whole time, and then cut his chakra flow to his feet, sinking into the lake below, without a ripple. Naruto sank slowly, before landing on the floor and entering a meditative position, thinking. He knew he could only last there a few minutes, but hopefully it would be enough to. Aki, I think you should learn something before you continue that thought. I am a creature of the lake, and with that, comes a few privileges, how do you think Yagura gained such control over water? Naruto's eyes shot open, back to his normal cerulean blue, startling a few naids that were edging closer to him, when his eyes were closed. What do you mean? You can naturally absorb the oxygen from the water through your skin. This only works for freshwater however, as I always avoided the sea due to its all content. This won't mean you will last forever, but you have roughly an hour. Isobu said with an uncharacteristic tone of excitement. Naruto's eyes expanded like balloons and nodded profusely in thanks, making a few of the naids look at each other in confusion. Naruto calmed himself before closing his eyes again. Can I try water manipulation? Since I am here and I know I have chakra with an affinity for it. Everyone waited in silence for Kukuo, who was in thought. She sighed before giving out a few orders. Very well, but wait a moment. Jayuki, Kurama, Jimei, get ready to restrain his chakra flow, should he release too much, we don't need to kill everything in this lake to check. Naruto, ease into it, I mean it, go as slowly as possible. 
Naruto's eyes flared with determination as he opened them again, before holding out his hand. Okay, I am just going to release a small amount of chakra into the water, not yours, but mine, no offense, but we don't know what damage your chakra could do. The Bijuu grinned at his concern, before readying themselves to help him. Naruto calmed his beating heart and focused on his chakra. He could have done this much easier, but right now, he needed every chance of control he could get. And boy was he right. Just as he gave a slight tug, what was almost like a tidal wave surged forward, pushing back his will to slow it down. The Bijuu saw his grip get blown away rather comically, before exerting their own pressure to slow its flow. Naruto regained himself and began working it through, taking a small amount from a small amount, before he had a small amount of chakra. He opened his eyes and let his chakra flow to his hand's points, before releasing it. Now that was cool. His chakra left his body and lit up the whole lake. It was like the aurora borealis lighting up a night sky, it streaked through of all different sorts of colors, weaving around the sea creatures, and all of them gave looks of astonishment, before all of them relaxed in blissful comfort. Naruto watched his chakra do its work through the water, before it fully saturated the lake. Okay, information time. Jayuki said with a grin, from what I can see, your chakra is imbued with nature, probably because of Pan, but as you can see, it's very powerful, potent, and almost the complete opposite of our chakra. While ours is tumultuous, violent and corrosive, yours is peaceful, passive, and almost restorative. It's ironic that you might have actually gained healing powers just after the war, that's called timing. Naruto frowned at that thought, he could have saved so many with this power, he could have saved Neji. Hit, focus, the water is responding. Naruto focused back on reality and saw the water around him moving angrily in a small whirlpool. He immediately rectified this and slowed the spiral, letting the Naids regain their balance. Naruto shot out of the water and landed on its surface, with only small ripples, before walking towards the shore, which still had some campers there and a centaur who looked relieved that I had come to the surface. Hey wait, I'm walking on water. Doesn't that mean I have good control? No, I'm helping you. Isobu said with a snort. Back to the basics for you. Naruto sighed as he touched land again and looked at the centaur towering over him, was there something you needed? Tyron just looked at him in surprise, you walked on water. I did. Have you been claimed before? You mean that weird floating symbol over my head? Nope, never. Tyron looked disbelieving, are you sure? Naruto snorted, yeah, I'm pretty sure, it'd be really hard to miss. Tyron just looked at him for a time, before waving to an open air pavilion on the crest of a small hill behind him, we are about to have lunch, would you like to join us? Naruto perked up at the idea, lunch. Tyron looked surprised at this and smiled, yes, lunch, free of charge. Naruto walked really close to the centaur and asked with a hopeful voice. Do you have ramen? Tyron looked completely baffled at the request, but nodded, I am fairly confident we have ramen. How much? Tyron was seriously wigged out by this kid's hopeful expression and sparkling eyes. I doubt you could eat it all. Naruto all of a sudden laughed and jumped to give Chiron a small punch to the shoulder, before giggling as he fell back to the earth, running behind him, and started pushing him towards the pavilion. Hurry hurry. I haven't had ramen in ages. The centaur looked completely blown away by this boy, while the Bijuu opened their eyes in horror. Buckle up for the long haul. The monster has returned. Shukaku giggled madly, surprising everyone, before running in small circles in mock panic. The Bijuu felt like planting their faces in the eight inner gates, before repeatedly slamming the gate against their heads. Naruto was in love. He wished for ramen, and he got it. He wished for more ramen, and he got more. He wished for even more ramen, and he got even more. Paradise. The Bijuu were groaning in dismay as the campers merely stared wide-eyed at the steadily growing bowls of ramen that seemingly disappeared from existence in the void that they realized was Naruto's stomach. Naruto just kept slurping them down, showing no intention of stopping, even when he started to turn green. Thirty-seven bowls later, and Chiron put a stop to it, afraid for the boy's health and his stomach, which looked like the Hindenburg. Naruto sighed sadly at once again being separated from his ramen, it wasn't as good as AM and Tucci's, but it was still good. He got up from an empty guest table as it became apparent that anyone who sat next to him would not be clean afterwards. Naruto sighed as he walked out contentedly, his sadness disappearing as he relished the warmth in his belly. You almost beat your previous record, three more bowls, and you would have gotten into the forties. Kurama said in mock encouragement, while on the inside, everyone knew he was impressed. Naruto grinned, a gleam in his eye, I'll get him next time. He said aloud, before his face turned green again and he held his stomach. Don't talk kid, you might blow up. Naruto nodded and waddled up to Peleus, who looked like he had seen a ghost when he saw Naruto's humongous belly peeking out from his shirt. Naruto nearly fell over as Peleus whipped his tail around and grabbed him gently before yanking towards the dragon at dangerous speeds. 
He would have hurled, but he wasn't going to do that on Peleus, no way. This dragon was badass. Abiju sighed at realizing Naruto wasn't going to be moving a lot today, and so brainstormed on what to do. Naruto, you said you used Kage Bunshin in this world before, correct? Naruto groaned before mentally nodding. Try and summon one, outside of Peleus's circle. Don't try and cap it, just pour some out and see what happens. Son Goku said exasperatedly, he was obviously tired of the wait. Before Kukuo could caution him, Naruto put his fingers together in a cross, before releasing some chakra. Hage Bunshin no Jutsu. And then all hell broke loose. There was a massive explosion of smoke around Peleus, who was instantly on guard, protecting Naruto and the tree with fire in his eyes, until they widening in confusion. Standing in front of him, was another Naruto. And behind him, another one. And another one. And more. And a lot more. And a lot more. Once the smoke rolled off the hilltop, nearly 200 Naruto's were standing around, smiling like idiots. Naruto stared at all of them in shock, before shuddering in horror, oh my kami, I didn't realize my control was that bad. The other Biju were impressed as well, he hadn't used any of their chakra, and his own reserves were still strong at over 98%. Chakra control. Naruto shouted from Peleus's protective barrier, before keeling backwards and groaning, holding his stomach. The clones nodded, before disappearing in a blur of speed. By the time the campers came up the hill in preparation for battle, there was nothing there but a confused-looking dragon and a green blonde with a large stomach. Tyron wondered what the hell created that large explosion, but upon seeing no evidence of it, he simply shrugged and talked the campers it was a false alarm. A few looked glad, while others were disappointed. Apparently, they were hoping for a fight. Which would have been bad if they faced an army of Naruto's, it just wouldn't end any other way than a huge loss, and a lot of orange. Naruto relaxed in the cool embrace of the dragon and the calming effect of the fleece, before drifting off into a small nap to ease the pain. And it was nice. Until a centaur rudely woke him up, though it was kinda funny watching his reaction to Peleus Nar let him for disturbing him, which just made the dragon that much cooler. Naruto, I need your help. He said, trying to mask his somewhat skittish self as the dragon glared at him with all the might of the predator. Naruto opened his eyes groggily as he looked at the startled centaur. Am I the best person to ask? Tyrant transitioned from startled to guilty, yes, your ability to walk on water will be most advantageous. Two of my campers, a satyr and a cyclops need your assistance. They have been kidnapped by a traitor, and their lives are at risk. The traitor? Naruto thought in surprise, before his mood soured at the notion, he too had been on the receiving end of a traitorous bastard, Mizuki left him with an important lifelong lesson regarding it. Naruto narrowed his eyes in recollection, and knew he simply had to. He stood up and stretched, noticing the look of urgency that kept nagging the corners of the centaur's mouth. How far? Naruto said, squatting and shifting leg to leg. Not far, near the coast, I will take you. Naruto looked at him seriously, pumping himself up for a run as he quickened his movements. His neck cracked, and he stared at Chiron with as much focus as Peleus. My help is different from most. When you ask me to do something, I do it completely. If I am attacked, I deem them an enemy, and they will probably die quickly. If you give me this mission, anyone who gets in my way will be killed, grievously injured, or flee. Can you accept the consequences? Will you take responsibility? Tyron was surprised at the sudden change, before looking at Naruto with hope, they are held by Luke Castellan, a traitor who keeps the company of monsters. If he keeps with the enemy, he must accept his role in this. All the monsters except Grover and Tyson are fair game to slay. Naruto nodded, before patting Peleus and smiling, thanks for protecting me. The dragon yawned and nudged him in the back, pushing him forward. Naruto chuckled and walked in front of the centaur. You run, I will follow. Tyron looked like he was told a joke, Naruto, you will be left behind. Now it was Naruto's turn to be told the joke, trust me Chiron, I'm a lot faster than you think, I'd like to you try and outrun me. Tyron looked highly skeptical, but nodded, we leave now. And then he started to gallop, and then run. Naruto was at first surprised, before it grew into plain shock at the speed, before grinning excitedly a chance to really go. He has been caged in fear of damaging himself for too long. It's time to throw caution to the wind and go. Naruto kept pace with the centaur, even pulling ahead, you better stay in front if you want to lead he said tauntingly, before running faster, increasing his speed along with Chiron's, who had a stupid look on his face. Their speed kept increasing, until the world around them lost definition and became a blur of colors. And Naruto never felt so alive. He laughed wildly as Chiron kept pace with him, he could go faster, he wanted to. Chiron. Is our destination a straight line from here? Chiron soon looked at him curiously, before adjusting their course so he was. Now we are at this speed, we will get there before long. 
Naruto grinned before sending some more chakra into his system, feeling the warmth power him up. Patch me if you can old man. Naruto yelled before shooting off, the ground cracking under his feet like dry twigs. He almost broke the sound barrier, but he had to be careful as it would deafen him, and there was some stuff in the way, it wasn't a straight shot anyway with obstacles in his path. Tyron almost stopped running from the stunning sight of the blonde just, vanishing into a streak of light, before pouring on more speed, a competitive spirit flaring in him. It wasn't long until other centaurs noticed them and started running with them. What's the rush bro? Why you running? And then they would see Naruto fly by, holy that kid's fast. Pretty soon, a whole herd of centaurs began to join them, and then they magically pulled out all this from nowhere, including banners, trumpets, and whoopee cushions. Party ponies were emblazoned proudly on all their cloths and items. The Bijuu immediately cut Naruto's sense link, as they could no longer watch what unfolded around them without experiencing mental pain. Naruto laughed like a maniac and kept speeding up, his clothes starting to tear from the forces of the wind, and his white cloak billowing behind him like a large tail. He was laughing so hard, it was liberating, and he never felt so free. Having such potent peaceful chakra running through him, it was like nothing he had ever felt before. It wasn't long before they thundered onto the shore and saw the cruise ship just off of it. Naruto gave a whoop and battle cry, not caring in the slightest for stealth, as they would definitely be able to see him on approach. With a grin, he ran headlong across the water, making sure Isoba was ready to catch him. He began his assault. He switched into battle mode and poured on more speed. He started creating visible distortions as he charged at the boat, and just as he was approaching, he jumped at it, his legs forward in a double-legged kick. He focused a large amount of chakra into a small battering ram on his feet and pointed it like a large spear and sailed at the ship's hull. That made an entrance, a glorious one fitting for a hero. Naruto quite literally blew a hole in the side of the ship, punching through like a stapler through paper. It decelerated him considerable, so when he reached the other side he could actually come to a halt before standing up and then running at the ship again, hearing the cries of war from the centaurs eager to join. Naruto ran at the ship, and then with a superhuman jump, he cleared the deck and double-handed ground slam a monster's head when he was about to bite the heads off a satyr and a blonde girl. The monster easily disintegrated, and the shockwaves from the blow cracked the deck beneath him. Naruto touched down softly and started at all the monsters, and a blonde-haired man with a scar on his cheek stared at him with surprise and annoyance. Kill him. Was his only words, before returning to a bloody and beaten boy with black hair and ocean green eyes. Well, that's friendlies recognized. And enemies identified. Naruto's eyes narrowed, before laughing silently, much to the monster's shock, well, I now know who I am to save and to kill, thanks for clearing up the misunderstanding. And then hell came and said hello. Arrows of all types began raining down, and centaurs leapt aboard and started shooting paintball guns and boxing glove arrows. Naruto grabbed the satyr and blonde girl, before chucking them behind him, and then grinning at the monsters. I have never seen something that truly deserves to be killed as you lot are, this will be fun. Naruto then closed his eyes and held his hands forward in a grappling stance and then lunged at them, eyes opening on the way, revealing their green and silver glory. And then he began massacring them with his bare hands. He didn't have any other weapons, and since he had no divine blood, the other enemy's swords passed right through him. That was funny. Naruto channeled chakra into his fists, and they glowed with blue power, the wooden deck cracking under him if he stayed in place for too long. He smashed through them all, no contest in strength. He made his way to the downed ally, and when he got there, he blasted his chakra outwards, knocking them back for a moment. What do you need? Water, throw me, pool. Naruto nodded and didn't question, he simply grabbed the kid's legs and slung him at the pool, not even watching him slam into the water before sinking. Naruto faced all the monsters, and then he grinned. Hey Son Goku, mind if I borrow some chakra? Son Goku grinned, kid, give them hell. Naruto grinned, and then let it loose. Fire started smoldering around him, and the ground started to blacken as it burned, waves of heat grew as Naruto's grin never changed, he crouched low and took in a deep breath before bringing his hands into two fists like a small pipe and blew out explosively. A large river of molten lava spewed from his mouth, splurging everywhere as the monster's fled or burned in agony at merely being next to it. Naruto resisted the urge to jutsu as he didn't know his limits yet and ran at them, encasing his fists, feet, and shoulders in flame. And then a large shadow encompassed him. Naruto turned to face an enemy, but in his surprise, he saw the black-haired teen standing in the pool, its water reaching high in the air. And what surprised Naruto the most? There was no chakra, no hand signs, he did it all with sheer willpower. The wave came crashing down, crushing monsters and sweeping them out to sea. When the water hit the cooling lava, a massive cloud of acidic steam exploded outwards. 
If the monsters had somehow still survived, the mist would soon fix that. Naruto turned on his heel and grabbed the kid he was tasked with rescuing and jumped off the ship. He noticed the other three on the backs of centaurs and decided the mission was a success. Naruto saw Chiron and grinned before turning to the kid on his shoulder. What's your name kid? Who you calling kid? Well, who you calling kid, brace yourself. Why I? Naruto did a small spin before hurling the boy off his shoulder and slinging him at Chiron. Old man. Catch. Chiron whirled around and saw one of his campers flying at him at high speeds. Chiron caught him without a second thought but glared at Naruto. Naruto only grinned cheekily, I ain't carrying him, and he is your camper. Tyron sighed and slung the kid over his back before galloping off. Naruto was about to follow, but a voice told him a much better idea. You're not actually going to let that boat go, right? Kurama said innocently. Naruto grinned, his cheeks starting to hurt from the frequency of this dangerous smile. Hell no. Crouching in a low stance and holding his hands in front of his sternum, he gave a cry of defiance. A black ball of pure chakra began to form in his hands. It was so dense light itself was starting to distort around it. He heard a few gasps of disbelief on the sidelines, but he didn't dare stop. This kind of compaction would kill him if he lost control. The ball continued to grow in size before it reached the size of his stomach and then his torso. Naruto gritted his teeth in concentration. But he never stopped smiling. Ajudama. Naruto roared before igniting chakra in his hands, launching the ball at the ship. The ball started to glow a bright white before Naruto turned to the audience on the beach, which included the four kids he saved. Get down. They immediately complied and ducked behind trees, only to look on in horror as Naruto ran past them. Not there you idiots. Run. They all gave chase, running like prison escapees as they hauled ass up the nearest hill and took cover behind it. They all peeked over, unable to resist seeing what this attack could do. If Naruto, someone who just spat out lava onto an open deck with allies around was okay, then this ought to be quite the show. The attack continued to glow dangerously before it glowed too brightly to look at, then they heard it. It was earth-shatteringly loud. It made Zeus's thunderclaps look like the applause of parents at a kid's play. It bellowed through the air, breaking apart the ocean floor and throwing water every which way. The shore where they had hidden before was blown away and tossed about like an omelette on a frying pan. They felt the ripple in the earth as the shockwave slapped them though the hill and the massive mushroom of energy light up the sky for miles. They all looked at the explosion in fascination and horror before looking over at Naruto when the show was over. He looked a little tired, but that was it. And that scared them more. What the hell was that? An eccentric centaur yelled out, unsure of how to process this. Naruto grinned at them, that, my audience, was one of my strongest attacks, the Bijudama. I focus the energy that runs within me and compress it into something so dense it warps the light around it. It is not my strongest attack, but it definitely gets the points across. Tyron and the others looked at him in shock while Naruto was still grinning. Chiron. Yes. I may need to be carried back. I haven't used that in a while and it's tired me out. My body is going to shut down soon, carry it back will you? Give me to Peleus, he will know what to do. Tyron looked confused before Naruto's knees buckled and failed. He toppled over, face first into to the ground, but just in time, the black-haired kid caught him. Thanks for you calling kid. Naruto said quietly. The kid snorted, while the centaurs gave small laughs, my name is Percy, son of Poseidon. Thanks for saving me and my friends. Naruto chuckled quietly, his eyelids forcing themselves closed. Percy, I'll remember that. I'll see you, back, dot at, cam dot dot p. And then Naruto fell slack. Percy looked at the kid in his arms. He looked around 15 years old, blonde hair, whisker marks on his cheeks, white cloak, and that strange energy about him. Percy sighed before turning to his companions, Chiron, can you give me a hand? He is kinda heavy. Naruto stood in the center of his mindscape, the Bijuu gathered around him. Naruto, dot what did I say about no jutsu? Kukuo asked calmly, though it only made her seem more angry. Naruto cowered behind Son Goku, who looked a little pale as well. Why 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 you said no jutsu, but the Bijuudama isn't a jutsu. I figured that since it cost so much chakra it would be okay for me to use. Kukuo sighed and looked to Seiken to explain. Naruto, it's not that you couldn't handle, it's that your body hasn't used a heavy taxing jutsu in a long time. Forcing that much chakra through your system, regardless of how much you have, is dangerous. We live in here. 
if you destroyed your pathways, where would we go? Naruto frowned, but nodded, I never meant to endanger you, but I believed that with all your help if focusing it, I would be able to pull it off without any trouble. All of you can do it on your own, so helping me do it with each other's help made sense to me as being easier. They were silent for a time, before Matatabi turned to Kurama, look, more proof, the kitten really has a brain. You're so rude. Naruto yelled out childishly, before looking at all of them and bowing deeply. I am so sorry if I put you in danger, it won't happen again. Abijuu looked at him for a while, before sighing, we do not blame you, but we wish you would listen to us when we say no, we mean it. Not everything we do is for your safety, it is for our own as well. Chimei said simply, and Naruto nodded, before bowing again. I'm sorry, I understand. Abijuu grumbled in agreement, before Kurama reached forward and flicked Naruto lightly in the head, sending him falling backwards. Naruto sputtered, but when he saw it was Kurama, he merely smiled and looked down, yeah, I get you. And then he smiled at all of them, alright, I'll wake up now, I'll see you all tonight. He started to leave, when Shukaku caught him and giggled, remember, you need some sand. Naruto nodded at the insane Tanuki, before patting him on his sandy head gratefully, disappearing as he left his mindscape. Naruto's eyes opened as he felt himself surface, and as he did so, he heard a lot of voices muttering in shock and awe. He cracked his eyes open, hoping they weren't talking about him, Peleus asleep or something. They shouldn't be this close. Naruto slowly opened his eyes, and then he saw. All the backs of the campers, staring at the tree. He wasn't sure if he should be even there or not, when he heard a sudden gasp. Peleus lifted Naruto up so he could see, and just as he did, he noticed the blonde girl, Percy, and the satyr holding a black-haired girl in spiky black clothing. She looked around 15 years old, and had piercing electric blue eyes. I'm Thalia, daughter of Zeus. I thought only dryads could do that. It had been an eventful few months for Naruto, six months actually. After a daughter of Zeus fell out of a tree, he actually got some peace and quiet, now that everyone had a different person to hound, and he made sure to exploit every moment of it. He slept with Peleus every night. Sure, he missed a mattress, but come on, it was a dragon. Who would pass that up? And while he was conversing with his tenants and discussing information of the world they lived in, Naruto's private information force was gathering intelligence in the new world he lived in. His chakra force practiced chakra control and elemental manipulation. Ever since he had seen Percy Jackson manipulate water by sheer will alone, it told him all he needed to know. It was possible. After that, Naruto spent his six months with Peleus, the nature spirits in the camp, and the Athena cabin. Why? Well, they were the children of the goddess of wisdom. If he was ever going to gain information on the world, it would definitely be there. Of course it was difficult, sometimes they would get this weird glimmer and go on about architecture, and then enter this weird comatose state and become unresponsive. It was at that point he would have to exchange the defective child with another cabin mate and resume the lecture. Their average lifespan and recuperation wasn't very long, but it helped him sort through the information better with the breaks it gave him as he swapped them out. After the end of each month, his clones would dispel in set intervals, and he often spent that time unconscious with his Biju friends, sorting through his information. He would then create a new force and continue. His chakra force was making leaps and bounds, dispelling at the end of each day. Probably because of his more passive chakra nature it was much easier to control than before, it was its eyes that was the problem. He remastered the Rasengan after the first month, a testament to how large his reserves had expanded, and then began learning an assortment of Biju techniques and how to best use them. He had gained many new abilities from his friends, and it took nearly all five months to learn them, kind of, he was still inexperienced with them, but he was getting there. Chukaku gave him a strange form of sediment manipulation, where he could control sand and other finely ground minerals, he was currently working on increasing their size and forming them into shapes like Gari used to do, it was pretty freaking cool. Matatabi assisted him in giving him immunity to heat and flames, along with the ability to create it and extinguish it. He couldn't manipulate it though, that was his current project. Asobu focused on his durability and patience, along with defensive water manipulation. Naruto was already fairly strong, but if he could increase the density of his skin to an almost armor-like state, he would be a force to be reckoned with, it was a combined effort with Shmei. Son Goku focused on heat pressure tolerance, elemental combination, and taijutsu. His style was extremely powerful, and when Matatabi's flexibility and Asobu and Shmei's durability and armor came in, he would be unstoppable. Akam focused on the nature of the elements, and chemistry, and healing. She was very firm in that the mind can win any brawl before it starts and be much more dangerous than any weapon in his arsenal. Except for his stupidity, but it was a double-edged sword. Seiken focused on observation, reaction, and pure chakra manipulation. It was a skill only she could use, and it was very effective. 
because Bijuu chakra is so corrosive, she could manipulate it in such a way it broke down and destroyed almost everything, but it was very dangerous and required strict and focused use, otherwise he would die trying to use it or kill an ally. Mei focused on muscle memory and defenses with Asobu, along with stealth and speed. Dayuki focused on precision, calligraphy, and misdirection. Something his ink was very handy for. He was a pro at distraction and misdirection, a skill that was definitely dangerous. And lastly, Kurama. He focused on one thing, and the most important. Control. He was always there, beating on Naruto for control, forcing him to focus and narrow it down. Naruto really wasn't sure if he was going to survive, but at the end of the six-month period, it was obvious he had made some serious improvement. He was getting ready to attempt his strongest wind attack, the Rasen Shuriken, when he felt a ping go off in his mind. It was strong. It reminded him of the fleece, but different. It was stronger, but more, tranquil, like a crystal clear lake at the bottom of a cave. Pure. Naruto turned to the source and frowned in thought before setting off. Kit, where are you going, you can't practice this attack anywhere near anyone else. Naruto shook his head, it's on hold, I sent something, it's like the fleece, and I need to see. The Bijuu sighed, another chase. Great. Naruto set off, wondering what the hell could give off such a pull. You ever see a manticore? You know, the body of a lion, tail of a, um, whatever that is, with a human face and several rows of teeth. No. Well, let's just say it isn't a welcoming sight. It was a few hours before Naruto managed to get to where the pulse was going off and burst through a snowy tree line to see this. The manticore, holding Annabeth in his grasp, with Percy, two new kids, and Thalia facing off with him. The manticore was badly wounded, with silver arrows lodged in his body from multiple angles. He was staggering about, and I rapidly realized that he was heading for the cliff. I sent a quick prayer to Kami in hopes that I wouldn't get shot and rushed forward. Annabeth. Percy screamed in horror as they tumbled over the edge. Just as he was about to give chase, several girls in silver clothing appeared and held him in place, preventing him from jumping. You are in no condition to be jumping off cliffs boy. Naruto ran right past them, I got her. They all looked up in shock at his sudden appearance, and a few tried to restrain him, but he was in and out faster than any could grab him. He ran to the edge and jumped to the opposite wall, before running down it at high speeds. He saw the manticore with Annabeth. They had reached the bottom and were clawing to reach to shore before being swept with the current. Naruto snorted, this shouldn't be too hard. Naruto leapt off the cliff side and shot at the manticore like a bullet, striking its head with a momentum-enhanced stomp, shoving his head underwater. In that instant, he reached down and grabbed Annabeth before crouching and jumping up to avoid the clutches of the angry manticore. Naruto took a moment to examine the beast before turning and running at the wall and then running up it. His chakra control was nearly back to normal, but it was still iffy at best, so he really shouldn't do this for long. He sprinted up the cliffside, Annabeth screaming the whole way, which was partially annoying, but funny all the same. He shot out of the canyon, before somersaulting forward and catching Annabeth in both arms princess style. He landed with hardly a sound, which would have been pretty cool if Annabeth hadn't been screaming the whole way. Missed opportunities. Naruto stood up slowly, letting Annabeth catch her breath, before gently putting her down and letting her sink to her knees, getting her bearings. You're lucky I was passing through, would have been bad news for you. Jackson really does have bad luck following him around, huh? Annabeth's eyes snapped up as she recognized him, Naruto. What are you doing here? Naruto looked at her with a small smile, didn't I just say I was passing through? Annabeth looked like she wanted to yell at him, but looked down in embarrassment as she realized he was right. Naruto laughed at her expression and helped her up, before being punched in the shoulder playfully. Dragon boy, been a while. Thalia said with a smirk. Naruto smirked in kind and two finger prodded her in the forehead as he walked by, angering her slightly. Yeah, been a while Thalia, anything new? Not really, just watched you run up a cliffside though, that was interesting, how'd you do that? Naruto looked at her for a second, before spreading his hands open with a stupid look on his face. Maji Ike. She flicked him in the shoulder again, a small spark zapping him in the process. He chuckled as he turned and saw Percy struggling to get up and run to Annabeth, but the girls were holding him down. The hunters of Artemis she said flatly, though a small amount of reverence and annoyance came into her tone. Naruto frowned at that and walked over to him with Annabeth, who seemed happy to see Percy was okay, and likewise. 
The silver girl seemed to notice Percy's lack of struggling and released him, letting the two hug, though they were obviously annoyed by it, or at Percy for that matter, interesting. Naruto looked at the scene before giving a dramatic theatrical bow, well, I'm glad I could be of assistance, but I must be on my merry way, catch you later. He said as he gave a mock salute, before turning to run. Naruto. Percy shouted out. Naruto turned to look at him and saw several hunters aiming their bows at him, with a young girl standing in the middle. Naruto fully turned around, hands up and surrender looking confused. Have I done something? Why boy? Naruto turned to her sharply, startling her slightly with his eyes, you seem to misunderstand something. And then in a blur, he was gone. Only a few of the hunters could actually see him move, and only one had time to react. Naruto turned to run, and he did, but as he was about to make it to the forest, a girl of 12 appeared in front of him, hunting him back. Naruto looked surprised at being intercepted, but landed gracefully. The hunters all launched their arrows at him, and in their shock, all of them hit his skin and shattered. The arrows all bounced off and broke beyond repair, as if being shot into a large rock. The hunters looked shocked at this and quickly drew another arrow, but as they did so, a large presence started to manifest, and they looked on in shock at Naruto, who started to gain these weird tattoos on his face and his eyes. They turned silver and green. Even the 12-year-old girl looked shocked at this development and readied herself for combat. Naruto vanished and reappeared directly in front of her, staring at her eyes from inches away. It's you, you are the beacon. She looked confused for a moment before shooting her leg forward in an attempt to push him back. And to her astonishment, he didn't move an inch. A dull thud extured like hitting wood, but he didn't give any indication of being struck, who is this man? Naruto looked at her for a moment before backing away and then turning to his camper friends, completely dismissing them. Naruto walked over to Annabeth, who was still doing some first aid on Percy, and pointed at the 12-year-old. That's Artemis isn't it? The goddess of the moon, wilderness, and the hunt right? Annabeth nodded, yes, that's her, though I wouldn't speak that way about her, she hates males already, don't make it worse. She chastised quietly, while Naruto just snorted. He looked to Percy, who was still leaking blood inside. Dude, you have a serious issue with Lady Luck, you need to work it out or something, cause at this rate the sky is gonna fall on us. Percy snorted, his face a little pale, yeah, no joke huh? Naruto extended his hand, which started to glow a faint green, and placed it over his wound. His features immediately relaxed and color returned to his skin. The blood reabsorbed itself and his wound healed closed. The hunters gasped at his skill while Artemis narrowed her eyes. Naruto stood up a little shakily but nodded down at him, rest a bit, you'll be fine. What are you guys doing out here anyway? I mean, with those two and all? He asked, pointing at the pair of new kids. That's Bianca and Naiko D'Angelo, demigods, the manticore was after them. Grover said happily, and Naruto only smiled before turning to the two kids who weren't sure how to fell about this whole situation. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Too soon to die am I right? He said with a smile before turning to the hunt. Well, thanks for the punt, I'll be going now. Hold it boy. The name is Naruto. Shut up boy. Okay girl, what do you want? She glared at him, she didn't like him poking fun, all you demigods are staying with us. Naruto only crossed his arms and mirrored her tone in a playful mockery, finger wagging and all. Ah, but you see girl, I am not a demigod, therefore I won't be staying, and you couldn't make me either. The girl didn't appreciate this mockery, watch your tone boy. Naruto only turned and walked away, watch my ass girl. He said as he gave a few exaggerated sways as he moved away. That did it. The girl lunged forward, slashing at him with her knife, and to her surprise, it passed straight through him. Naruto turned, grabbing her by her shoulders, and slung her back to where she was before, sending her flying like a paper airplane. The girl spun and landed on her feet, looking at him shock. Naruto only grinned at her. I wasn't lying when I said I was mortal, bye girl. And then he resumed his walk, only to have the 12-year-old standing in front of him. You will stay, it is my will. She said, though he could tell the thought of having another man around only disgusted her, and that didn't really make him want to stay. Naruto looked at the girl for a few moments before walking right around her and continuing on his way. You would ignore goddess boy. She seethed, drawing her bow at him. Naruto turned and stared at her, I mean no disrespect Lady Artemis, but my entire venture here was to find a presence of nature energy, which turned out to be you. Her eyes narrowed, you were seeking me out. Naruto shook his head, no, just the nature within you. It doesn't need protecting as you possess it, so I have nothing to worry about. She frowned, who are you? Naruto sighed, my name is Naruto, why? She growled at me and pointed her arrow at me point blank, what are you boy? Naruto gritted his teeth but withheld his anger. I have given you my name and you will call by it or I will leave. 
She growled at me even more and pressed her arrow tip against my throat. You are not going anywhere boy. Not until you have answered my questions. Naruto glared right back, his eyes changing from silver to crimson red, with slit black pupils my patience has limits. Goodbye Artemis, I pray we never cross paths again. Naruto turned around and walked away until an arrow thudded into the trunk by his head. When he turned, he saw an 18-year-old woman standing there. She had long auburn hair, a breathtaking face, perfect curves and muscles with glowing silver eyes. You dare? She called with absolute anger, her silvery clothes fluttering under her magical force. To be dismissed by a mortal, a boy. It was unforgivable. Naruto noticed the pressure she was exuding in this form and growled in annoyance. He turned to her, marched in front of her, and stood staring straight into her eyes, rage visible in his black slit pupils. I will give you this one chance to let me go freely, or else. Naruto said his crimson eyes staring into her silver ones. Naruto let his pressure match hers, just to let her know he wasn't powerless, and she only growled in more anger. Mortal, you will show me respect. She hissed, before her magic pressure started to escalate. Naruto watched her grow in size, until she reached nearly 15 feet in height. Her massive bow aimed down at him in preparation to spear him into the ground. Naruto snorted, and then chuckled. And then laughed, and then stopped, dead silence. Behind Artemis, the campers recognized this and their eyes widened, before turning to the other hunters and running away, taking cover behind some trees. They even frantically waved at them to join them. Naruto looked up at the goddess, his eyes starting to glow. His voice transformed into this demonic vocal that sent shivers down everyone's spines. Immortals, you are all the same. You relish in your power and demand that all those beneath you respect you, as if your immortality or power gives you the right. Naruto's body began to shimmer and glow gold. You demean all those who stand up to you and kill without remorse, making promises and oaths knowing full well that you have no intentions of keeping them, what do you have to fear? Naruto's chakra started to pour out of him, amassing around him and lifting him off the ground, a monstrous form taking shape. I've had enough. I will no longer listen, I will no longer wait. My patience has run out, and as you would rather be enemies, I will show you the error of your ways. The massive golden fox with nine tails formed around him, Naruto at the head. He kept growing, and growing, and growing. Fairly soon, he towered over Artemis, one of his tails was large enough to fully encase her with room to spare. His tail swished chaotically as he glared at her from above. The ground beneath him cracked under the weight, and Artemis felt her arms fall to her sides limply as she stared at the creature in front of her. She could see Naruto in the center of the head, staring down at her, a body of gold, radiating power. But she didn't feel threatened. She felt comforted, just standing in his aura of power. She felt protected, nurtured, at peace. She felt blessed. She stared numbly at his form, the hunters behind her leaping out of the trees to aid her, forming a protective ring around her, aiming their bows at him. And then the fox disappeared. Naruto fell to the earth, landing gracefully as his golden aura fell away from him. It was absorbed into the trees around him, the wildlife and the earth. They glowed happily at the energy, and everything that absorbed it just gave off the same aura he did. Like coming home. She stared at the boy in front of her, completely baffled by what she witnessed. The amount of power he just showed, it was on par with Tiffin, the king of monsters. Naruto stared at her hard, glaring, I have decided that I don't like you. I heard stories of how you were one of the most active Olympians, saving girls from their cruel lives at the hands of their fathers, partners, or whatever plagued them. I had hoped that you would have been able to help me, but I see that the stories only pertain to women. You hate being oppressed and thought less of, and yet you take every opportunity to oppress someone else at every turn, regardless of who they are or what they have done. Naruto turned on his heel, walking away, heading towards the hunters, you really piss me off. Don't appear before me again, I have nothing to say to you. The hunters were speechless. This boy had just accused them of being as bad as the males. He knows nothing, he is just a boy. Artemis on the other hand, was thinking back to his aura, his soul. It was so pure. Like the clearest diamond in a mountain of garbage. She watched his retreating form as he walked over to the campers. They all looked relieved that he was okay, and he smiled at them in return, talking of something she couldn't hear. Interesting. Artemis stared at him for a time, before turning to the girls around her. We may camp here. Summon Bianca to my tent after you set up camp, make a tent for the males as well, far away from ours. They all nodded grudgingly, but moved about their business, though most if not all of them shot dirty looks at Naruto, who just looked at them, crimson eyes flashing angrily, and they moved off. What was he? He can't be human. Artemis watched him interact with them, how he was always clear of them, even when a few tried to bump into him and knock him down. He was always aware of what was around him, it was almost like a chaotic dance. Artemis eyed, wondering why she even cared about the boy, she was a maiden goddess after all, none of her concern. 
She walked forward, and Naruto blatantly ignored her, as if she wasn't even there. It was rather impressive how he could look so passive, and yet somehow always avoid her. It was like she was just another blade of grass in a large field. It angered her to be blatantly disregarded, but she kept her temper. She still believed that she would win in a battle, but she wouldn't be uninjured. His mortality prevented him from being a superior opponent, in a battle of endurance, she would win. There was no monster that could not be brought down by her bow. She walked to her tent, which was already set up, and walked in without a word to anyone. Many of the hunters began moving the demigods to their places, body ones who were talking to the males were obviously disgusted with what was in front of them, and Naruto could see that Percy definitely didn't appreciate it. He watched as Percy got dragged into Artemis's tent with Bianca, and watched Grover lead Naiko away while they did so. Naruto's eye narrowed in anger, taking Naiko's only family for your own benefit. You truly can't sink lower. Naruto marshaled his and walked over to Naiko and Grover, Nice was chatting away excitedly, explaining his game, while Grover looked ready to fall over from the complexity and information he was absorbing. You're Naiko right? Naruto asked, startling the two. Naiko turned and stared at Naruto with wide eyes, yeah. What about you? What was that cool thing you did? You turned into a giant fox. Naruto laughed at the boy and knelt in front of him. Yeah, it's one of the benefits of being me. It's pretty cool huh? Naiko nodded, yeah. You were so tall. I wish I could see from way up there. Naruto grinned, really? Well, let's go. Bye ya ha 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 ha. Naiko screamed with laughter as Naruto picked him up and Naruto jumped really high and then began running in circles, not even falling. Naiko looked around in wonder as Naruto carried him through the sky. How are you doing that? Naiko shouted, and Naruto grinned. It's called air walking. I focus my body's natural energy and push it forcefully out of my feet as I step. I can't do it for very long yet, but it's pretty cool huh? More like I'm shoving my chakra down so hard it boosts me upwards, but meh, same difference. It's a miracle you even understand that, Kukuo must have really nailed some stuff in there. Hey. Naruto ran and ran, Naiko laughing the whole way, until he started running back down, a big smile on his face from seeing Naiko laugh so hard. Naruto eventually stopped pushing Chakra and ran to a tree, before sticking to it sideways, holding Naiko, who shrieked with more laughter as Naruto stayed there. You're like Spider-Man. Wow. Naruto laughed, yeah, I suppose I am aren't I? Or maybe he is like me. Naruto said with a playful chest puff. Naiko giggled and kicked his feet a bit as he looked down at Grover, who was looking like he had a heart attack. Naiko giggled, before looking up at the sky and smiling, I wish I could stay up there, in the stars, nobody can get hurt up there, and nobody can be taken away. He said quietly, and Naruto only smiled, bringing the kid in for a hug. You know, my parents are up there. Naiko looked over in shock, really? Naruto nodded sadly with a smile, yeah, they sacrificed themselves to protect me the day I was born, and now, they watch over me from way up there, they aren't gone Naiko, they are always up there, watching you, and caring for you. Whenever you feel alone, you come to me okay. I'll take you so high that the clouds will be beneath your feet. Not even Zeus can shoot us down. Naruto said with a big smile. Naiko looked ready to cry, but he stifled it and nodded before hugging Naruto tightly, whispering thanks. Naruto smiled at the kid, he made a silent vow right then and there that he would always be there for the kid, even when he no longer wanted it. If he was in trouble he would do his absolute best to help him out. Especially with Bianca ditching him, Naruto jumped down, touching the earth softly and glaring over to his right, before walking away with a large smile as he listened to Naiko talk. From the trees he glared at, Artemis walked out, surprised at being noticed. She was honestly impressed by the boy, which ticked her off to no end. He had so much power, but he never put anyone down, never, he always lifted them up, carrying their weight on his shoulders and soldiering on. Artemis stared at his retreating form before vanishing in a silver flash. Naruto and Naiko walked back to camp, with Grover pumping Naruto for information on how he was able to run on air. Naruto simply laughed at his questions and dodged them. He wouldn't understand anyway, and when he answered Chakra, he would be screwed, with many more questions. So best leave him with one, and call it good. Naruto walked to the boy's tent, seeing it was pretty much empty, and gently set Naiko down on a cot. Naruto smiled at the kid, it really was a shame that he had to suffer more, but in the end, it would make him stronger. Like it did him. Naruto focused a bit of his chakra into his hand, letting it glow orange with power, before gently placing it on Naiko's forehead. He smiled sleepily and turned over, content in his current place. Naruto sighed, before turning and seeing a hunter staring at him. Lady Artemis has summoned you. Naruto looked at her for a long moment, raising an eyebrow, seriously. After the talking down to and the glaring. If she demands one thing from me, I swear I'm going to tap all of your power and show her just what kind of monster she is with. 
Well, it would kill you in the process, but I guess you would make your point. You could probably handle Karama and maybe Matatabi at the same time, but all of us. No, it would make you explode like the world's largest and most colorful firework. Thanks for the image. Naruto continued to stare at the hunter, who looked to be getting annoyed, did you hear me? Lady Art. SHH, you'll wake him. Naruto hissed at her, and she recoiled in shock at being shushed by a boy. She seethed with anger, raising her voice, I don't care, now. Hunt. The girl all of a sudden was sent flying backwards, being stopped soon after by an unseen force and gently placed on the ground. The girl turned to see Artemis standing there with a blank look. Theob, where is he? The girl seethed, in that tent, I tried to get him my lady, but he. Picked you out, yes I did. The girls turned to see Naruto standing there, hands in his pockets looking very annoyed. Barging into Naiko's tent declaring that I had been summoned, and then you felt the need to bitch at me, nearly waking the kid up in the process. You're lucky I didn't kill you outright, but Jackson is still in your custody, and I doubt that Artemis would spare him should I end your life. Artemis looked at him steadily, you have killed. Naruto snorted, you wanted to talk, start talking. Theob looked ready to kill him, but Artemis stayed her with a wave. Theob, finish setting up the camp, Zo will need to brief Bianca on her new duties. Naruto frowned, she really gave him up huh? Wow, you guys really don't care for the lives you leave behind do you? Artemis replied in an angry tone, she has the right to her own life, she can choose. Naruto disappeared and reappeared right behind her so fast she didn't even see the blur. And I could choose to spill your blood on the very ground you're standing on. I could choose right. It's my life right. I can decide right. Artemis seethed, that's different. Naruto growled so low she felt it vibrate in her bones. Not in the slightest. By making this choice she has forever changed Naiko's life. You gods are all the same. It disgusts me. She whirled around to snap at him, but he wasn't there anymore, he was back to where he was before, a perfectly faked smiling face as he looked at her. So tell me oh wise and divine goddess, what do you want with a little pathetic mortal boy like me? She glared at him, do you truly hate the Olympians that much? Naruto laughed loudly, sure do. It's because of one of you I'm stuck in this world. I don't even belong here. She frowned, what? Naruto looked at her annoyed, what, you didn't feel the crowing of a new lord of the wild? Her eyes widened, that's supposed to be a secret. How do you know? Because it's me moon for brains. Naruto shouted out in anger. Artemis recoiled in shock, then that power. Naruto snorted, no, that power has never been the wilds, nor mine for that matter. All I got with the title was a small enhancement to my pre-existing senjutsu abilities, physical abilities, and increased metabolism and immunity to some poisons. Pan didn't even tell me what I am supposed to do to get back. Artemis's eyes widened, what? Pan. You saw him. Naruto fascipumed, oh my kami. He said in despair as he rubbed his eyes. Who else had the title? It sure as hell wasn't Zeus. Thunder rumbled in the night sky, and Naruto only scowled, I don't care what you have to say. Come say it to my face if you want to talk static prick. Thunder rumbled louder, before fading away, and Naruto snorted, before looking back at Artemis, who was looking at him strangely. It's impossible, your mortal, celestial bronze phased through you. How can you hold such power and remain mortal? Naruto only looked at her, before turned away and walking back to his tent. Olympians, waste of brain space a lot of you. Power hungry, you're just like my old village council, always looking for ways to make your lives better. How low can you get? Artemis considered charging him, but calmed herself, she was only digging a hole, and she needed to learn about Pan. Wait. Naruto stopped, not turning around, Pan summoned me to this world without my consent or want. He pulled me into this dimension, and told me that he had never seen a mortal with such a strong connection to nature as I did. So he gave me his titles and domains, and then faded, leaving me in a subterranean cave in the middle of nowhere. If he isn't dead, I'll kill him myself when I find him. I will return to my world. Artemis stared at him in shock, Pan is faded. Naruto just walked off, oh, she cares, too bad it's about his power, not the actual guy who possessed it. I really don't like you, so piss off. Artemis seethed, before reappearing before him. How can I trust your word? Naruto stopped, before everything grew deadly, quiet. Cricket stopped chirping, animals stopped moving, wind stopped blowing, everything stopped as Naruto froze, before a menacing voice cut though. Do you want to die? Artemis glared, no, I want the truth. Naruto glared at her, his eyes flaring crimson so brilliantly she felt like she was staring at a stoplight. You demean me, then stalk me, then summon me like a dog, then interrogate me, and then you want to question my word. Naruto said venomously. Artemis felt a little fear in her at the tone, but held firm. It concerns the death of another god, so yes, I must make sure. Naruto stood stock still, before calming himself. 
Artemis, I propose a spar. She raised an eyebrow, but smiled dangerously, what are the terms? Naruto saw her grin and felt his opinion of her raise a bit, a very very small bit. If I win, you won't ask me any more questions until I see you next. We will depart on friendly terms, and I am owed one favor. Should you win, I will answer any and all questions regarding Pan that you ask, and I swear it will be the truth, you will have one favor from me. Do we have a deal? Artemis felt her competitive fire brew up, as long as the favors are within our power, I accept. Naruto grinned, no powers, no gifts, only weapons and fists. Submission or knockout. Is that agreeable? Artemis nodded, before snapping her fingers, and a huntress appeared behind her. Zo, referee for us will you? We will be having a spar. No powers, magic, gifts, or outside assistance. Only weapons and fists. Victor on submission or knockout. Stand by. Zo nodded, before glancing at me suspiciously. Naruto stepped back a few paces, while Artemis copied him. When they stood around ten paces apart, Zo appeared with a bow. When the arrow lands. Naruto and Artemis nodded, before staring at each other. Artemis noticed his eyes had shifted back to blue, staring at her like chips of ice. He was a completely different person, she could feel it. Interesting. Zo released her arrow, and Naruto closed his eyes, before entering a strange stance. Artemis pulled out her hunting knives, and waited. Thunk. Naruto snapped his eyes open and jumped straight up. Artemis watched him rise into the sky, surprised by his physical strength, and then tilted her head to the side as he fell to the earth, fists raised high. Raiaiaiaia. Naruto roared as he slammed his fists into the ground. And it shook. Artemis's eyes widened in shock as the ground around Naruto shook and exploded, cracking apart as it caved in, forcing the earth around him to uplift and fly into their air. She lost sight of him, and she shot backwards just in time to avoid an attack from above again. She watched as Naruto ran all over the place. She could track him, but wasn't sure if she could actually catch him. Then from nowhere, he dived in, throwing a loud round kick directly at her. She jumped over it and only had time to block his reverse sidekick as she was sent flying backwards into the trees, Naruto in hot pursuit. The sounds of combat echoed through the forest as the two tussled. Naruto let out some laughs as he relished in the combat. He wasn't battle crazy, but it was exhilarating nonetheless. Artemis was also enjoying herself, though she would never admit it, she continued to charge at him, and they fought. Explosions of dirt and trees falling echoed like thunder. Then Naruto came sailing out of the tree line, skidding to a halt as he looked up to see Artemis charging at him. He grinned, before rolling up his pant legs. Artemis stopped her advance as she watched him carefully, was he finally going to draw a weapon? Nope. Naruto revealed a pair of weights hiding underneath, and he took them off, holding them both in each hand, he had a crazy grin on his face, and stared at her with glee. Let's see if you can keep up. Artemis was about to retort on how a few little weights wouldn't make that much of a difference. Until he dropped them. They crashed to the ground with a loud clang and a plume of dust. Artemis's and Zo's mouths dropped along with their audience as Naruto grinned and bounced on his feet, he rolled up his sleeves to reveal others on his arms, but he didn't move them, only letting her know they were there. Let's dance. He laughed as he streaked forward, slinging the goddess back into the forest. He followed in hot pursuit, laughing the whole way. The hunters and demigods watched with wide eyes as they witnessed and heard the two fighters battle each other back and forth. They continued to sling each other back into the trees, before catapulting after them. One thing stood out the most though. They were smiling, grinning from ear to ear. After a solid 20 minutes, Naruto walked out of the tree line, a goddess in his arms. She looked pretty beaten up, but she had a smile on her face as her eyes were closed. I accept defeat. She murmured, and Naruto chuckled, gently placing her on the ground in front of the hunters. He raised both hands and gently guided them down her full form like a scan. His hands passed over, her wounds and injuries healed. Her face had a faint blush as she smiled at the feeling of his aura. Naruto made sure his hands never came into contact as he went. He didn't have the energy to harden his skin, so if the hunters wanted they could shoot him, and it would probably hurt like a bitch. He sighed in relief as he let his hands fall to his sides. He looked at the crowd and saw Naiko standing nearby with stars in his eyes. Naruto. You're so cool. Naruto just stared at him for a second before laughing outright, giggling to himself as he waved him over. Naiko came over and hugged him, and Naruto returned it, before smiling. Hey man, can you help me up? My legs aren't that steady. Naiko laughed and struggled to lift him, and Naruto smiled at him. He really was a nice kid. He was about to shove himself up when he felt his other arm being grabbed and his weight being lifted. He turned and saw Zo, the referee, lifting him up. Why? He asked. Zo didn't answer at first, but looked him in the eye. My lady hasn't had that much fun in some time. The Olympians can't actively fight each other, and many monsters hardly pose a challenge. 
She could fight to her best today, and you never looked down on her or gloated of your victory. It's the least I can do. She finished, before looking forward and walking with him. She and Nyko struggled to support him, and he chuckled at their expressions. After they got to Nyko's tent, they sat Naruto on a bed, and he smiled at them gratefully. Thanks for the help Nyko, you too Zo, you may not be as bad as I thought you were. She snorted, likewise. Naruto grinned evilly, you know those weights I dropped. She nodded, confused by his grin. Do you think you could, I don't know, see if Grover can lift them? She glared at him, do you doubt that I could? Did she not realize he was setting up a prank for him? Naruto shook his head, no no. But that would be funny. She glared at him, I'll be back. Or she could willingly be pranked by him, either one works. She stormed out of the tent, and Naruto giggled, hey Naiko, watch her. It'll be hilarious. Naiko poked his head out, while Naruto dragged himself across the floor and put his head out. Zo had just gotten to his weights, and gave an experimental tug on his weights, finding that they were in fact heavy. Naruto and Naiko giggled as they saw her crouch low and try to lift it with both hands. She managed to get the first few plates off the ground, but they fell back with a thud. She glared at the weights, before glancing back at the tent and seeing Naruto and Naiko staring at her, their cheeks puffed out with laughter. She glared at them, before trying again. And again. And again. Eventually, two or three hunters managed to pick up a leg weight and carry it over to where Naruto was laying down. They grinned at him before dropping it on his back, taking satisfaction at hearing his breath wuff out of his lungs. They laughed, but when they saw Naruto's grin, they stopped. I do believe I had two weights. He said innocently, and they paled and glared at him, looking over and seeing that there was indeed one more weight in a little crater, and groaned. Two more hunters later, and Naruto had both weights on his back, though he never stopped laughing. They glared at him in embarrassment, but they couldn't seem to stay mad at him, his laughter was just so infectious. They picked up the weights just to drop it back on him, but that only made him laugh harder. Especially when they tried to pick up both sets at the same time. They ended up losing it and smashing their head together as one fell forward onto Naruto's back. They joined him in his laughter at that, but they soon realized what they were doing and glared at him, though their blushes only made it funnier. After a while, they finally left him alone, and Zo helped him back on his mattress, but before she could leave, Naruto asked her a question. Do you allow pranks in the hunt? She seemed thoughtful, but nodded, yes, though everyone is too afraid to prank me and Lady Artemis. Naruto grinned, and then gave a sinister troublemaker laugh. Well, my new accomplice, what do you say we change that? I hope you guys liked the story. If you did, click on any of the videos which are popping on the screen right now. I promise you'll love them too. If you like my videos you can like and subscribe too. I'll see on another amazing what if video guys. Love you all, peace.